Hello, welcome all to the Leo podcast. Today we have with us Josh Rathbold, who is a ML engineer at Samsung. He will be answering questions like how to get a job in this field and projects to be done by beginners. So, without any further delay, let's start. So, hello everyone. I am Puyas Kapadia, the host of today's episode. I warmly welcome you all to the Leo podcast. Before starting the episode, I would like to request Josh if he could give us a brief introduction about himself, what he is currently doing, and his ambitions for the future. Yeah. Hey, Puyas. So, like, first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me here. And just a brief about me. Hi, I'm Josh. Um, I am a machine learning engineer at Samsung. So I've been working on speech recognition there. And previously, I finished my B.Tech from BJTI, which is in Mumbai. And I, I, I had my bachelor's in computer engineering. So yeah, I've been in machine learning for like for past three to three and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like the second thing which I would like to ask you is, can you tell us uh, like how you started developing interest in machine learning? So like when I was in second year, I have done diploma. So when I was in second year diploma, machine learning was quite trending. So I liked it. I saw Google Home speakers, Alexa speakers. So that triggered me like, what is this happening behind? So that's how I got interested and I came into it. So could you tell us something about yourself? Yeah. Uh, so like for the, for very similar reasons, even I started with ML, uh, like it was the hype, it's the new thing that's in. <laughs> and uh, like I had a few friends and seniors who were like, Josh, you need to know about this. <laughs> so I started with that and yeah. just took on a few courses, some projects. Uh, so yeah, okay. after the projects, I was like feeling a bit stagnant. So I got in touch with a few mentors and they really helped me out. Work. Like we, I worked on great projects with them and Okay. Yeah, keeping I keep working on projects, and today I'm here. <laughs> Thank, uh, like hopefully I'll be going more. <laughs> yeah. So since you mentioned about the hype of machine learning, so as I have also seen like new people coming in, like first second year students in engineering also, we want to get into machine learning. How to go about? And there's a lot of hype. Like every second person in computer science or IT wants to get into machine learning. So what do you feel right. about this hype? Is it good or bad? Or what do you think for this hype? Right. So the hype is good as uh, it helps us develop more stuff. More and more people contribute to that. But uh, I personally feel that people are having a misconception about AI. Um, like about that. It's being named as the cool technology where it's a very statistic based and a math foundation. Uh, it's a math foundation subject. So that is one thing that most people, that is why after maybe a couple of courses, they'll be leaving this out and they'll be like, oh, it's too boring or it's like, it's we are not learning anything. We're not going anywhere. But uh, like, I would like to say something that I, I had done. So I went through doing, uh, that, that's machine learning in the deep learning specialization. Uh, if <laughs> the viewers, if someone has done that, then please pair with that. The math can be too intensive, but you don't need to know everything about that. <laughs> um, also, like there are a few courses. I personally feel that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That was the first thing that I felt. And I was almost halfway through and I was like, no, this is not for me, but I just stuck to that. <laughs> and there's, there's a great course by... Okay. Uh, like fast AI course is great to understand the general picture of AI and machine learning coding. And they also explain stuff really well. Uh, apart from that, I would believe blogs are a very good, good place to get some good knowledge. And like there are people out there who are trying to simplify it for us really easily. So yeah, you can look for blogs on, I think, towards data science, machine learning mastery. These are some great places for even from basic to advanced stuff. So uh, for anyone who's looking into that, that would be great. And the hype, basically, I believe once you get into this, you won't feel that hype. <laughs> it's uh, like it's a very budding industry, even if people are feeling it has been around from 1980s, but it's <laughs> like it's developing now. It's like it's blooming in its true potential now. <laughs> yes, I agree. And uh, since you mentioned the courses and blogs, are any some specific books which also you would recommend? Uh, books could be really helpful if you want to dig deep into that. 
and if you start loving the math and which will happen after a few projects that we'll be working on so uh, this okay. one really great book uh, i think it's by stanford professors it's elements uh, element of statistical learning it's freely available as a pdf for everyone to refer but it is a really great book to understand the basics and the math behind it it can seem a bit daunting but uh, like it's a, it's an amazing resource if you're really interested in going that deep so um, yeah okay yeah and since you are uh, sorry since you have mentioned about the project so much so like i would ask you that any particular project which you would recommend for a newbie like me or someone to enter so like what i used to see when i had started is i used to put hello world for machine learning first project was cnn using mnist so until and unless i don't understand the basics of neural networks i cannot go get into cnn that is my personal like thing so any projects which you would recommend for the beginners to get into it and start with them yeah so like due to the nature of this field it's very important for us to know at least the basics of it like how the basic regression techniques classification techniques and the basics of neural nets how we can build one so uh, like any course that you will be picking up i think they will be having some problems to solve those are a good starting point to go on and they are crafted for people like who are just starting out so that's great but once you are done i think uh, kaggle can be a great place to get some data sets uh, competitions can be a bit uh, like they might seem a bit uh, difficult at first but uh, there are some data sets that are openly available and we can work on like the titanic data set or the house price prediction so we can start with something like that and try and build on slowly so that will give us the basic exposure for that and um like it will help us explore this field and we'll understand how to go about projects so yeah okay yeah i get it and what i feel is the projects which i we have done as students are quite different from the projects which i have seen in industries not just on the terms of scale and everything but uh, even if we see on the deployment part and there is many small small things and minute things which come into picture when you are doing a industry project so could you give us some tips with the help of which we can bridge this gap and make industry ready projects for the beginners uh, for the beginners this can be quite difficult as uh, like in the industry what we've seen is that uh, like there are a lot many people working collectively to bring about a project to its full fledge uh, like uh, to the to its full scale so it can be very difficult for like for students who are just starting out or even who know about it to get hands to some resources and even the compute power for that so the best approach for students would be to get some mentorship and get some help like our teachers are a great place who can help us out most of the colleges have some uh, some research labs or something where we can talk to people and maybe we can assist them in some ways phd students can be great help for this and internships are another great place like Uh, if we can intern with some companies or some startups so we can learn a great deal about how we need to think about building those projects and how we can uh, like how, even if we are doing it on a personal level how we can go about it so that will be a great exposure in my opinion okay and other thing which i personally have faced it out like whenever you make a machine learning project it is usually a jupyter notebook or a command line project so it is becomes very difficult for a new user to come and operate it so what do you feel like any tips like for gui or like creating it into an api i have tried creating it into an api i code in python so now i have started learning kvmd to connect it right. to a ui or something so any such things which you have experienced and something you've learned out of it which would help us um, like this is actually a personal choice like i have been working i have worked with lot many people and uh, like we all have differed in the kind of tools we used so for okay. me mostly i have always preferred working with notebooks when i have to make a presentation or i have to show it to a group or i have to like yeah just when i'm planning to show someone or i'm putting up some pl plots and charts so like some visualization stuff so at that time i prefer notebooks but apart from that either command line or working on an editor seems fit to me So it's actually like your personal choice. I have friends who've been who are very comfortable with Jupyter notebook and every everything that they work on is on that. So, like that's fine. There's no restrictions okay. to that, and 
it's quite acceptable in the industry as well okay and second thing once i am ready with my project like right. i have created a model for example for predicting a share price so if i have created it now if i want to deploy it so what shall i use it like shall i create it means shall i go for an api or shall i go for a front end or how shall i go about it so uh, that is also yeah. quite a lot which i have faced right, right. <laughs> problems like because if you create an api then the bandwidth and all you have to take into consideration like if you are exactly. hosting it somewhere how much internet and all it is using all that stuff so any middle solution or something which you have for us unfortunately i won't be able to elaborate much on that uh, like i personally okay. haven't worked on uh, much that has been like actually deploying the stuff i've more been working on the research aspect of it but from what i know and from the, the small projects that i've worked on in this space so again it completely depends on the project like i've been uh, there's some projects where there is another team or there's another team member who's working on something that just wants my input out of the model so in that sense api makes a, like it's it's uh, it's the better choice and for some projects it's like my model is directly spitting out the image uh, which has to be which is the output so for that okay. so you can means using a front end a flask based um, microservice or even streamlet is a good option for that so using that okay. we can build some great front end with and uh, without much effort so i personally went for something like that rather than a full fledged deployable product i went for something that at least uh shows it as a proof of concept that it works uh i i could be wrong about this <laughs> that's okay so like the next thing what i think is when you make a project it covers a lot of perspectives so which were the projects which are done by you uh, not after joining samsung i'm like in your college life which you think have impacted you a lot to learn new stuff and have given you a great boost in the ml career so any projects which you would like to discuss uh yeah like uh, so i've written three papers in ai uh, of which the last two papers were like really an eye opener and a bit, that that gave me a big push in my career in ml so one of them has been a wind forecasting system and uh the things i learned while working on that project was amazing like i never discovered the kind of data pre processing ever in any projects before uh like my mentors my friends and everyone really helped me out with that so that was something amazing that uh like it gives a lot of push when we are working on something novel it really pushes us to think about all the possible solutions and how we can bring it about and in that process we explore a hell of a lot like uh the things the different algorithms and all i applied three algorithms but i explored more than 20 in that process which i never knew and never worked on and as for the uh, one math based it was about interpretable machine learning so i have a model but how do i trust that model is so good so i wanted to try and uh, see if i if i model can tell why is it giving out that prediction so that was my basic thought process for that and so in that i had to really dig deep into the math and Uh, how different algorithms are working and how it is trying to capture stuff from my model so that really pushes us to like i believe that is a very good way like even if it's a simple project it's a very good way to learn about uh, even the basics or very novel aspects of this okay so now as you mentioned about the research papers so what i wanted to ask you is research papers play a very big impact that is what i personally also feel that research papers play a very big impact when you want to enter it but there is a new research paper coming out every day in machine learning field if you see right. so how does a person choose which research paper should he read based on what factors so if someone new is coming out any specific research papers which you would re- recommend or any thing while a person downloads ten research papers so how do as he understand whether to read this or not and will it be helpful for him or not right so like uh, this actually depends on the kind of projects you are interested in. uh like say for example now i'm working on speech recognition so the papers that come out which are in the speech technology space uh that would interest me to look at okay how they been going about that uh, i have a few friends who are working in natural language processing so they keep an eye towards all the papers that come out of the institutes or 
uh, universities or companies that are working in this space heavily. So that is one aspect you can divide it by topic and depending on what you want to read, you can go about it or what you know about the best you can read about it. Uh, even in that, your question still remains valid that even there are 10 natural language processing papers coming out every year. <laughs> so yeah, or every day rather. <laughs> so the thing for that would be that uh, I, what I personally do is I look for how reputable the source for that is. Like if it's coming out from a university which is very renowned or uh, it's a paper by Google or Amazon or some of the biggest companies. So that gives me credibility for the work that they have done that it is something good. I think the abstract and the conclusion would be more or less enough to identify if I'm working on this kind of stuff and I would want to expand into this. So yeah, I think that would be my thought process. And pa reading papers can be a bit difficult initially, but uh, I believe authors do a really good job of trying to explain it. And like, if you just go with the flow, I think it, we slowly start understanding things as to the parts that they're implementing and the things they're working on. And any particular site where, which you would recommend where people can go and access these papers. So like Google scholars, I use personally any one which you would recommend. Uh, Google scholar is a great place. Uh, archive is a place which is like, uh, like that's been blooming in our industry, at least the computer science industry. So that's a place where people put their preprint versions and uh, like it's for the, for everyone to read and comment on to get, give them great feedback. So it's also a good place to explore the best works by researchers that are working in this space. Um, as for social media, I believe LinkedIn and even Twitter is a can follow great uh, people. There's some and they will be publishing their works there. So we can get hang of them uh, like at the earliest. So I think that helps a lot. Okay. And like when I was new to the field, what I personally used to do is I used to read a paper. I remember I had read a paper on backpropagation. I don't remember who had written it. So after reading it, I, I was like, now I'll implement it from scratch in Python. I had very big time trying to implement it, this, that, and all. So what would you recommend? Like if a newbie, per, per new person reads a paper, what should he do next? Like after reading the paper, what is the thing which he should do? Right. Uh, first of all, it can depend from the use case to use case. Say uh, you're working with a team, everyone is, or you have something already implemented, then you're just trying to get the gist of it and trying to understand it. Uh, if you are really keen on implementing it from scratch, like you mentioned, that is the biggest problem. Like uh, it can take quite some time to implement. And uh, also for some papers, it might not be clearly mentioned about the small tricks that they use to make it work. Uh, sometimes it's just the kind of, say the activation function was a bit different or it was a modified version, or maybe it was the kind of data set that was biased. Or there are many factors involved. Uh, so if you're trying to implement something from scratch, then I would recommend make sure that uh, it's like a good first issue for you to solve and then maybe you can build it on. Uh, also, like we don't need to build anything from scratch. Like if, uh, like if implementation is the scope, like if that's your goal, then maybe you can just read about it and you can also find some great open source implementations for that. So even reading the code can be quite intuitive as to how they're building that and uh, like, even if then you are interested, you can follow the lines that they've worked on. So uh, that really helps. Reading the code really helps. So the now next thing which I would like to ask is when newbies come, they want to get a job or internship in machine learning. How should they go about? Like I was trying to get a machine learning internship almost for eight to nine months. After that, I got it. But it's quite difficult to get an internship as a machine learning intern. Like I also had to mail so many people resume, go on LinkedIn, here, there, try these web uh, different websites and all. So any tips which you would give, which would help us getting good internships or jobs? Yeah, so uh, for newbies, it can be a bit difficult to get a job in the industry. Uh, like for obvious reasons, because people really want someone who's experienced. So that is why startups can be a great place to work on. Um, getting in touch with people who work at the startup and uh, networking with them can help a lot. So LinkedIn is a great place for that. You can network too, and you can also uh, see for the opportunities that the startups offering, some job openings and postings. Uh, the company website can also be a great place. 
and after maybe a couple of internships it really boosts our work also and it gives the other employees a satisfaction that you've done some good stuff so even getting into some big companies can help a lot so yeah i think uh, that would be the yeah even i had done that so <laughs> and i have seen many people work on that so i believe that would be a good way to get at uh get some machine learning work in some of the good companies okay and the second thing i would ask is like there are quite a few roles of machine learning and i would say like it is one role of machine learning and 10 people out there so one machine learning intern is required by the company and there are more than 10 rather people applying for them so how to stand out in that like if there are 10 resumes how what should i do it in my resume that my resume stands out of it and after that in the interview process and all so what are the key things which help you get a machine learning uh, in, internship or job like secure it right so definitely there'll be uh, i would say more than 10 people applying for that <laughs> uh, so the thing would be uh, our resume really has to have some projects and some work that we've done now uh, people have this misconception about have they usually list out projects that are like the hello world of machine learning like working on something in using the mnist data set or the iris data set or maybe house price prediction so those are some cliche stuff that everybody knows and everybody sees there's nothing novel in that something new so that is why the projects and the stuff you mentioned should be something that is different something that you have tried on and some amazing work that at least it's different from the cliche stuff so that is like a very important distinguishing factor if you can work on something in on like some research papers projects hackathons uh, even assisting your professors in some form of a research work um a couple of internships in the industry that can really help a lot it can boost our, our chances of getting there and as for the things that go on with the interview the interview process uh, at least what i've seen in india require us to at least know basics of coding and data structures and algorithms uh, and some cs fundamentals so this always most of the time there's one round that at least concerns that and apart from that like um they also they don't want to know about the complex stuff that we've done they ask about it but the interview most probably will something about the basics of machine learning so it could be about your data is overfitting how do you solve it now it might seem simple but they can really dig deep into that as to say for example you say regularization so define it what are the types of it and so it can go deep in that linear regression uh, how do we get the line for that what is the basic equation what kind of loss functions you can use so it's actually testing our foundations that if we know the foundations early level we can build with complex algorithms so i believe they always try to test something like that so having the fundamentals right is really helpful in that sense and since you mentioned about the projects in your cv should be different from other people out there so my question would be could you suggest some projects which beginners can do the audience of this channel can do to secure it I previously mentioned about Kaggle so that is a great place to find some new data sets that we've been working on uh the approach that i used to get really hands on with stuff was i took the housing price data set which is a very commonly available data set and worked on you will find n number of tutorials on that and instead of looking at those i tried to solve it all by myself try to figure out new algorithms new approaches different cleaning techniques and all so it really got the foundations well and Uh, also like with the mnis data set you can do hundreds of things like the task is not just to identify the numbers you can also work on some generative task use it to train a generative model and try and produce a gan based model so there can be many things so that this gets us going with different stuff and different ideas and uh, also there are many data sets that you can scrape off like uh, you mentioned earlier about the stock price prediction the uh, problem yeah. so we can scrape a data set of our own and we can run predict with that uh, cryptocurrencies can be great and you can find so many data sets with so many different use cases especially in the computer vision space it works so we can use the same coco data set to try and work out so many different things to try and identify like it could be used for object segmentation or image classification and even a generative model and try to work with auto encoders and stuff so 
uh, basically when we get started with this we'll slowly start finding what people have worked and what we can do and it's all about actually creativity <laughs> more than about uh, like a process uh, like mathematics as a field of but it's more about how creative we can be with this and um soon as we look at some tutorials and stuff we'll find that we don't we are not finding the exact solution for this data set but you find a new one so you can start working with that so uh, the more we read and the more we work in this we can find uh kaggle is a great place i think uh, there's a okay. very famous data set like the hello world for kaggle is i think uh, the titanic data set so it's like uh, we have to predict if the person will survive or not in, in the ship and yeah so that was one great place i learned all my image uh, the data cleaning techniques and visualization stuff while working on these data sets <laughs> so i figured out uh, how we go about it and stuff and to work on new projects i think hackathons was was what got me into that uh, trying to work okay. on novel stuff okay i get it so now next thing what i think is related to this thing nowadays there is very much youtube thing personal branding and everything which is coming into picture so if you see like there are quite a few people who are making their channels and posting videos of not only machine learning of any random thing not random thing but yeah coding thing on the yeah. channels uh for uh, forget you and trying to make a personal brand so this does this personal branding help in getting a job or internship Uh, yeah i believe actually it does because some of the times it can happen that your project is something that's a bit complex for someone else to understand so uh, they can actually go about reading your article about it as to where you try to demystify what you've done or a youtube video where you're just sharing or you are trying to provide it hands on so especially for tutorials it is a great thing that it shows the employer or anyone rather who's trying to look at your work that you know your stuff like because we are building it from scratch if you are working on a project from scratch or, and you are trying to make a tutorial or something so it really shows that okay you you have done your homework you know what's going on and you know this field that is why you are able to do it so well so that is one thing blogs and um, even research papers can come as a form of uh, expression of our work so we can share it with people and those interested can really glance at it uh, it does help yeah i i'm really for it okay uh, so the next thing is could you explain us the process of how you got placed into samsung uh, yeah sure <laughs> so uh, like it happened a couple of months uh, not a couple of months maybe some four or five months ago <laughs> where they reached out and they were like um, like if you want to we can schedule an interview and you can get that give they had an online test so i gave it thankfully i got selected <laughs> and the interview okay. rounds were scheduled so for the interviews it dwelled on both cs fundamentals data structures as well as some of my projects and the ai stuff that i done so it was an amazing interview like uh, the person is someone from samsung and someone who's been working exactly what you would want to do or you will be doing so that was a great experience and uh, like yeah if you are frank about that and if we worked on some great stuff then the discussion revolves more around our profile and our work rather than um, maybe a typical interview that goes on so that was really helpful <laughs> yeah i get it so now since you have to like you have you've get into it i would like to ask the research papers which you mentioned you i as far as you have mentioned that you have written three research papers so did all that stuff the help you getting through it yeah yeah so i have written five papers but three of them are in ai and two in blockchain okay so uh, okay. they really helped me a lot and because the whole discussion in a way started revolving around the work i did there and work on the papers and uh, how it helped and it also started going a bit about how the business impact of it and uh, like what i had exactly done so the approach might not be easy for the other person to understand so they were very keen on understanding as to okay try and simplify it for us so okay uh, so in a way they are testing me out as to do i really know what i had done and am i able to explain it or not and i hope i was and yeah it, it does really help it it quite shows that writing a research paper can be a task it's a very dedicating like we have to dedicate a lot for that it takes quite some time Uh, even working on that and then writing the paper so it's actually a very good value addition that this person is really disciplined and is interested in this field otherwise 
मतलब नो वन गोस फॉर अ रिसर्च पेपर दैट इज एनी सो या yeah i got it and if it doesn't go against the samsung's policy could you discuss a few things of how you work over there with us like what do you do and all about that stuff um, yeah maybe briefly i could just mention so i work at samsung r&d institute which is in bangalore and my work is my work is in automatic speech recognition so as the name suggests i work on speech technologies uh the best part about working here is being that uh the thing is it's the culture that they fostered here is really great innovation creativity and new ideas are like really tried out like they are very open and they are very frank about yeah you can try this out and is there something that i think about people are very friendly working here and as for the work that i've done speech recognition space is like a small community <laughs> it's like it's the speech technology space itself is a very small community and i am very thankful to be to have worked with some great researchers that are, that are in this space um yeah this is a budding space and uh, it's like all the ai techniques and all they are built for this things and the products that we build will be used like in the as voice assistants or as maybe products like uh, google home or alexa and something of that sort so it is a really great experience and we do know that these product uh, products will actually be used by someone and our work is being recognized <laughs> so yeah it's been okay. a great experience yeah. <laughs> okay so like next thing i would like to ask is oh machine learning is in too much boom right now and if we see what is the future according to you for coming for machine learning in the coming future what do you think like i think it will stay in the market for uh, 10 years more but like what i read and what i have come across everyone is saying as the technology is advancing blockchain and vr will soonly take over machine learning or overshadow it so what are your views on it uh, again a difficult question <laughs> but uh, i believe it's the hype might reduce but the technologies are here to all, all technologies are here to stay for a long long time Uh, because they are trying and improving the, our existing systems and trying to solve problems that uh, we haven't been able to solve like uh, using ai there are companies like uh, deep mind google and even samsung in that sense they're trying to use it use technology for space like a, like healthcare and um, like for personal usage and all different kinds of industries so i don't believe that it won't be there they will surely be there even after a long time it's just the hype that people will start realizing that there's not much to hype about but uh, it's a very much needed space here and as for blockchain or vr or some other technology taking it over i believe the use cases are very different <laughs> like blockchain yeah. and uh, both uh, of like can... yeah both. no no you may continue i'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> no, yeah so Uh, like for example blockchain can be like in one same problem we can have a different aspect which covers blockchain and one which uses ai so say for example like this covid pandemic uh, ai can be used to try and find out areas that will be next affected by covid or whether covid is being spread and try and predict the trends for that where blockchain can be used for the certificates uh, vaccination certificates that we have so they do not intersect much and even if they do they augment each other rather than it's like a fight between them <laughs> so yeah. and even working on these has been these are two fundamentally very different fields so uh, it's either you like something that is more like blockchain then you can work on that and there will be always people will be likewise want to work on ai and on vr so i don't see any technology going down in that sense it will be just yeah. their spaces get more uh, clearly defined in uh, that sense okay yeah so you know what i meant by overshadowing or that was that the hype for machine learning so do you think it will fall and what will be the next technology which will come in hype so that was what i was trying to ask <laughs> uh, this i'm really <laughs> sorry i can't answer that <laughs> the hype to some extent will fall uh, i this is my opinion I, i might be completely yeah. off the target uh, okay. uh, the hype might fall the use case will be there and the next technology that might come i personally see vr as something that will gain a lot of hype it has already having been having a lot of momentum and work done in this space 
but uh, the next big hype would uh, in my opinion be vr and Sorry. in a completely different aspect quantum computing so like the potential okay. of quantum computers is like it's moving now and yeah soon they'll be like they might be commercially available soon so i believe that is a space which will be really at least in the computer science community it will be something that is really like the next hype thing <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and since you mentioned about quantum computing, this could take us a bit away from what our topic is. But yeah, quantum com- computing. I would like to ask, since machine learning is quite dependent on the processor which you are using, so could quantum uh, computing bring a revolution in machine learning and AI as well? What are your uh, yeah, opinions on it? Yeah, it has actually it? already started doing that. So uh, I am not a specialist or haven't tried much about quantum computers, but from what I've read, how it's been revolutionizing AI. So the same machine learning algorithms that we've been running on our GPUs and our servers is taking quite a lot of time. Which, if we are able to successfully configure our quantum computers, then those processes will reduce to time frames in seconds, maybe just a few hundred seconds or something of that sort. So. it will really give a, give a push to both of these fields as the use cases will improve so will the need for quantum computers and their processing improve so yeah i believe it will both these fields will intermingle and revolutionize each other and it will be a big push for them okay i get it what you're trying to say <laughs> Yeah so now we would like to conclude the episode and i would like to ask jash if he has any parting advice for the beginners in this field yeah so this field is really amazing and uh, a lot of things to learn about and even explore in this maybe we can all be researchers in this space so for someone who's getting started in this uh this process can seem a bit daunting don't get scared it's fine it's natural to feel that way because there are not lot many projects and it doesn't work like at least from the technology that i work it doesn't work that way that just moving from one project to another will be that easy or uh, maybe we might feel stagnant in the mid for a while so just keep at it i'm sure that phase will just go and you will start loving this field <laughs> um get a few courses and work on them like there are hundreds of them out there you can uh, maybe refer this video and uh, or maybe just look at a course that someone suggests you and to work on some amazing stuff try and get some internships uh work with some great professors and mentors they can really help you out and they can really help you broaden your horizon about this field as to how you can work on projects and the kind of novel ideas that you can work on So it will give a great push even to your understanding as well as your profile. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that would be all. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Josh, for your time and great insights. I personally have learned a lot from this episode, and I am grateful to you for your this time and quality insights. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for inviting me, and definitely for. I'll be always available on LinkedIn so if anyone wants to feel free. Thank you all for listening. Hope you all liked it. Please do like, share and subscribe the channel and comment down the video which you want next. Thank you.